Hello, welcome back to the L1 show. Today's February 21st, and we're doing social stories and business. Not in that order. Not in that order, no. I forgot what the first category was for a brief well, moment, and then I looked over and was like, it's business. Because it's, it's business news. Something, something, job numbers line go up. And well, this, then yet, uh, no. This is the section we don't always have, but we have had for the last three to four weeks, which is the collapse section. And it's not as big as it was last week, which wasn't as big as it was the week before. Maybe we're on a, a trend here, but we also still have these stories. Bay Area tech giant Cisco is going to lay off more than 4,000 in a 5% staff cut. But our job numbers is going to go up because about 50% of that 4,000 is going to have a job as a Walmart greeter. They're going to have three jobs. That's definitely yeah. the same job. <laughs> They're going to be door dashing, Walmart greeting, and donating blood professionally. And last week we learned that Firefox was uh, naming a new CEO. They were going to restart a brand new world. But they didn't mention this in that press release. Firefox maker Mozilla is cutting 60 jobs after naming new CEO. I'm a little, a little nervous about Firefox's future right now. Yeah, aren't we all? Which is a, what is it, like 5%? They don't have a ton of employees. Yeah, 5% of its workforce. How does Mozilla have fewer employees than Spotify? Yeah, it's alarming, isn't it? And another one, and this is a much bigger number... Grammarly lays off 230 employees as part of a business restructuring. <laughs> Grammarly has also discovered that AI can be used for doing a lot of what it does. Yeah, the quote is that they're focusing on the AI-enabled workplace of the future, meaning <laughs> not humans. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We I will are. say a lot of those kind of like spell checkers and things like that, if you use any kind of vaguely archaic language, it has no idea what to do with it. Like, if you use a strange word order, if you use, like, thou or thee, it's like, I don't know what that is. Interesting. It's just like, listen, nerd. Yeah, get, get back into business <laughs> casual speech. And if you are uh, somewhat tech adjacent, you're working in the entertainment industry. Paramount Global laying off 800 employees as CEO back uh, backish sites need to cut costs. Yeah. Costs being humans. And uh, this is not a series of layoffs. However, we must question, was this on purpose? <laughs> because boy, did it move the market. <laughs> Lyft CEO says, my bad on margin error. It was a one zero. So he said that we've, we've improved 500 basis points. It was actually 50. But because there's so many automated trading and so much stuff, no one looked at that and said, that might be a mistake. They just, all the bots just traded on it, which caused the, the stock to surge, what was it, 67%? I thought there was a chart. The story I read had a chart, but yeah, it was a big line yeah, went up. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now some people are saying that, like, they modified the press release, but during the call, they didn't reference it. Until somebody raised their hand and was like, wait a minute, you just said 50, right? Because I'm reading right here, it says 500. And they were like, oh, yeah, we, we made a small mistake. <laughs> That's <laughs> brilliant. I mean, just. If it was a mistake, how bad do you feel if you were the one who typed up that press release? And it's like, ooh. We made a small mistake that changed the number by a factor of 10. <sighs> <laughs> they, they did well. I just, you know, that went up a lot. That really hurt them, though, because, like, it's good news. But when you lead with great news, mm. then the good news doesn't seem good anymore. Why wasn't it 500? I don't understand. <laughs> and uh, here, I'll just threw this one in because it was kind of like, yeah, a, a bit of a Captain Obvious story here. <laughs> Morgan Stanley says firms are focused on costs like never before. Including 2008, 2009. They're saying that even during those times, mm. we didn't see this kind of talk. Penny pension. Calls. Is that because of the impending world global situation? <laughs> I know you're like, I don't know if you're skirting around the algorithm or it's just like some vague, horrible thing in the distance. Like, well, I mean, it's, you know, it's a collective of all of it, right? An aggregate <laughs> horror. Yeah. We thought it was going to be this obvious military conflict. It turns out it was Cthulhu. Cthulhu was on his <laughs> way here this whole time. And moving over to some software news. Apple, of course, has the walled garden. But... How good are the gates of that garden? And how many gardeners are tending it at all times? Because something happened, and it happened over the course of some days. What was the headline? Uh, Apple pulls... Uh, Kimmy. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the streaming uh, piracy helper app from the store. Well, it wasn't really a helper app. 
it was one click piracy <laughs> but it disguised itself in the app store as a like search for the object game mm. but while you were searching for the object in the background was copyright movies and videos <laughs> and you got to choose what the background was neat uh. or not play the game And uh, Cloudflare, they have a brilliant, brilliant strategy of going after patent trolls. What do they do? They just share a little bit of wealth with the plebs. <laughs> Cloudflare defeats another patent troll with crowdsourced prior art army. <laughs> so we need to show uh, like something doing a flow-based routing before 2001. Okay, here you go. And if you find it, you get a bounty. And pl people found plenty. Smart move. And Amazon, as we all know, have ruined their video streaming service. I'll never use it again. I didn't use it I didn't a lot. use it a whole lot before, but yeah. yeah. But I never will again. And uh, a lot of people are upset. Amazon sued over Prime Video ads. Class action complaint accuses tech giant of immoral, unethical, oppressive, and unscrupulous conduct. What is that conduct? Adding ads in what was previously advertised as an ad-free tier. Not even the worst example from all of those descriptive words that Amazon's guilty of. Yeah. But here's the thing. Like, I guess if you're paying month to month, it wouldn't really affect you that much. But if you do the yearly subscription and you bought it in like January 1st, you did kind of get screwed here. Yeah. Also, um, there's a lot of the, like, the Amazon language around buying movies that still makes it seem like you're buying a movie. And you will take possession of the files and everything that you need to watch said movie. But that is not the case. When you buy a movie and you download it, you only get a 1080p version. You don't get a 4K version. Well, I'm sensing some salt. Yeah, a little bit. about something this week. Not only, not only that, but they have altered the deal further. <laughs> Amazon Prime Video drops Dolby Vision and Atmos unless you pay extra. Yeah, again. No thanks. <laughs> it's like, I I already paid for the, like, what? No, this is the audio codec. Like, give me the good audio codec. Why? You're making the, the pirated version of this a more attractive product. Stop it. No, this is the HDR yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it does look a lot better if you got a nice OLED screen, those blacks. <laughs> but you won't see it on the ad supported tier. They didn't announce that either. Somebody called them out on it, and they were like, oh, uh, yes, we will not be supporting that anymore. You have to pay Another extra. lawsuit. I wonder if it's because Dolby and uh, Atmos want royalties. Chris, do you say another lawsuit? And in fact, we do have another oh. lawsuit, because <laughs> Amazon's behavior is horrible. Amazon hides cheaper items with faster delivery, lawsuits allege. So this is the algorithm. The algorithm is, is uh, may, maybe returning items that have a higher profit to Amazon, even though they are a worse product. And I, I can definitely confirm that Amazon's search algorithm is worse. The site is basically unusable. You have to use Google to search Amazon to find the thing that you want. But this is not the search. This is, you know, like over on the side where it's like, pay, subscribe and save, one-time payment, or view other offers. They're saying that in the other offers, there's a cheaper price with the same shipping speed. Mm. But it's not fulfillment through Amazon. Mm. So Amazon will always rank theirs higher. higher up. A friend of mine ordered a keyboard this week and got, there was a message at the top he noticed that said that this item is frequently returned. Mm. I was like, oh, that's a new little bit of UI I haven't seen before. This is going to be class action if it goes through. I don't know if it's actually going to happen yet. But if it does go through, the class action will be anybody who's bought with the buy now button on Amazon, which is almost every <laughs> Amazon user in the world. Yeah. Or I guess just in the U.S. because it would be a U.S. Uh, lawsuit. Amazon's just like, ah, eh, we don't care. What are you going to do? Not buy through Amazon? <laughs> and here's another uh, part of the saga of our current research and school literature situation, which is just on fire and already dead. This paper is about how Google Scholar can be manipulated because scholars are interested in having their number of citations inflated. And it turns out that, yes, you can game that. And this paper describes how. Not only did they describe how, they did it. <laughs> a bunch of times. They made a fake paper. They bought fake citations for it. Neat. And uh, it's a beautiful thought 
that we could move past the current advertising paradigm where instead of having the advertisers as the middleman, we just pay the people that we like directly. Can it exist? Chrome Engine Devs experiment with automatic micro payments in the browser. Neat. Not a lot of details, but they're working on it. It would be cool if you were reading a web page. It's like, yes, I would like to give you a five cent tip. Hmm. I can load up at the beginning of the week. I can put $10 in my account. And that's my, my web viewing for the week. Five cents might be a little much. No, no, well, it depends on what it is. I guess with inflation. They point out that this has been tried many other times. It's never caught on, but maybe. <laughs> would you like to give me a five cent tip or sit through a 10 second ad? Yeah, I would break. I don't know. Five cents is pretty high. Can we negotiate? <laughs> well, yeah, and it, three. It depends on what it is, too, because like there's some content I'm happy to pay for, but like some stuff. How do you find new stuff to know if you want to pay for it? Yeah, like that's the that's the problem. Let's show you half of it. It's one cent per ten minute block. <laughs> that's gonna if do wonders good. for. And uh, if you are on the Microsoft operating system. And you're playing some games on there. They have a fun new feature, although everybody else already has this feature. Microsoft is working on its own DLSS-like upscaler for Windows 11. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll see. I guess, like maybe if you're running an Intel graphics card. Now we got another press release from VMware. <laughs> guess what? It's not good for the consumer. The end of general availability of the free vSphere hypervisor, ESXi 7.x and 8.x. So Broadcom is just like, nope, free product ain't happening. Get well, out. Was this article helpful? No. I love how this is like, you know, it's put in as sort of like a, a problem. It's like, oh, the symptoms is we've taken it away. <laughs> the resolution is you're not getting it back. <laughs> Ask the community. <laughs> But there's some spicy posts in there. Oh yeah, the the like our home lab is just the dudes that run Proxmox and XCP and G websites, which is like the you know the free tier hypervisors that are pretty good. They're just like uh, we've seen a dramatic uplift in traffic and users. We're a little overwhelmed right now. Well, you know who else is overwhelmed? The uh, me people running the payroll or, or the you know the financials over at Nvidia because of that line. It's going up. NVIDIA passes Alphabet in market cap and is now the third most valuable U.S. company. It makes sense because they are running the new artificial intelligence revolution. But that's not enough for them because they know that all these other companies are trying to sidestep them and, and escape the black hole that is NVIDIA's uh, A100 and H100 chips. So what do you do? NVIDIA mm -hmm. pursues a $30 billion custom chip opportunity with a new unit. It's like, hey, we know that people want to use our stuff and their stuff, so let's explore options for doing that. And make it specific to your thing. You can come to them and be like, hey, you know, this is our thing. We want to make it faster. We don't want the overhead of your generic chips. Fine, we'll do that for you. <laughs> it almost sounds like the AMD chiplet thing. <laughs> NVIDIA is looking around and saying, oh, man, AMD's got a good idea with putting the chiplets on stuff because you could mix compute chiplets and GPU chiplets and ASIC chiplets and, and NVIDIA's like, crap, we don't have that. And let's all just uh, dance around the fire of uh, level one text being right again. I mean, it was an easy prediction to make, <laughs> to be fair. But when you have hardware that's on a subscription service, like VMware is now, this happens. Ring video doorbell customers are angry at a 43% price Ooh. hike. Uh, did, did we, was that too much? Are people, uh... <laughs> are people struggling financially right now? Because we need line to go up. So it went from $34.99, this is in pounds, to $49.99. Or, yeah, $34.99 to $49.99. I don't think that it's a time where people have a lot of extra money the end of the month and it's like oh it provides a good value it really doesn't if you understand how to build the thing that ring does with your own hardware you'll save money in the first year but i also like i don't want people coming to my house i want to discourage them coming to the door <laughs> 
And uh, Walmart is finding that people are definitely going for the budget-minded television sets. And they're like, you know what? We need to be a bigger part of this. Walmart and talks to buy Vizio for more than $2 billion. Vizio makes super cheap TVs. Now Walmart's going to make them. That's usually how it goes. Good news for Vizio stockholders, I guess. Bad news for Lena Khan. Actually, or maybe good news if she gets her shotgun out to doom guy it up. That's a good point. Uh-huh. Is that too much? Is I mean, Walmart owns a lot of stuff. but yeah. Although they do also, so much of the stuff in their store they make their own version of already. Yeah. So Great value. Yeah. Well, the Apple Vision Pro headsets, I think we got a story about, the sort isn't great this week, but I think we have another story about the Vision Pro headsets later that should have gone before this one. But one man whose opinion we all hang on. <laughs> Has chimed in. After trying the Vision Pro, Mark Zuckerberg says the Quest 3 from his own Meta Corporation is the better product, period. Well, of course he's going to say that. I seem to remember Steve Ballmer saying that the iPhone is not going to work for email because it doesn't have a keyboard. Yeah, I don't... I haven't really buried this... uh, Oh, no, you know what? This is social media. Oh. Wait a minute. Because he's social media guy. Maybe that's why you put it in there. Did I miss some stories? Eh, it's fine. <laughs> all, right, all right, let's just move uh, on. To anyway, the, this is, this yeah, is, we didn't talk about that. This is not the Apple story we wanted here, but... <laughs> Apple is lobbying against the right to repair six months after supporting the right to repair. Again, Apple is sociopathic. Apple wants more money. Apple will do anything... They will step on your grandma to get more money. That is who they are ethically as a company. Not just that. They stomp on her. They say, put your mouth on the curb. Let's go. Yeah, it's actually like the other companies, which are also run by sociopaths, are impressive at how sociopathic Apple really is. Like, they are far beyond the pale of even like, I mean, Chevron is going to be hard-pressed to be as sociopathic as Apple. So... Apple supported the California version of this bill, which covered some things, but was a little bit toothless. Oregon now has a version of this bill, and it specifically points out uh, pairing devices, like the screen with the phone and not having replacement parts and stuff like that. And Apple's like, no, 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 no. That's a big part of our business. We're going to hang on to that. We need to be able to pair parts together. It's like, you know, the end user could pair parts together. Like, if I can cryptographically authorize the components of my phone and I control that, okay, that's fine. But Apple's not interested in that. And if you were an early adopter, you might be feeling a little bit upset, a little bit let down by your Cybertruck. Cybertruck owners say their stainless steel trucks are rusting. Okay. Stainless steel has always only been uh, rust resistant, but yeah. So some of these people point out that they uh, went to the dealership or called the dealership or whatever, and it was confirmed. They were like, yeah, you're going to have to buff that out. And he was like, I've had this truck for eight days. It's just been sitting outside. I really haven't even been driving it. And they're like, yeah, that's normal. Well, it turns out there's stuff in the rain that reacts with the stainless steel, and that's why it's rusting. It reminds me a little bit of like when people buy a water-resistant pack, and they're like, my sleeping bag got wet. And it's like, yeah, you needed to put it in a trash bag because it's water-resistant, not waterproof. Though, to be fair, a car I would expect to be. A yeah. little bit more durable than a backpack. I'm pretty sure, like, with all the car standard laws that we have, water not getting in is a big part of it. And water's yeah. not getting into these, but eventually. Well, yeah, eventually, if it rusts enough. There's, there's got to be a, a DeLorean owner out there somewhere that also bought a Cybertruck. And it's like, wow, we have we really have forgotten what it was like with the DeLorean. This is We learned all of these lessons with the DeLorean, and now we're learning them all over again. The story I've somehow lost, I don't know where it went, was... It seems that we're getting a big wave of returns on the Apple Vision Pro headsets. Yeah. People don't like them. They say that, actually, they say that they like it. I think probably the cult is too strong (laughs) to just say that you don't like it. But they're like, yeah, for $3,000, it kind of gives me headaches and it hurts. It's heavy. A lot of rice and beans that I need to go on living to eat. (laughs) (laughs) So they had a window where it was like the last day that you could return it. And, uh, bunch of people on social media claim they were returning it also didn't they say youtube app didn't work 
right. YouTube and doesn't isn't supported on it. They said the productivity apps just weren't there, and even if they were, the idea of sitting for eight hours wearing that was <laughs> also one guy was like, you know, this is fun, but like waving my hands around all day, like a mouse is way more efficient. <laughs> so I think I'll just go back to that. And uh, moving on to social media. It's interesting that we have the social media companies are very delicately being like, yeah, it's an election year, so maybe we don't want to be involved, but we kind of want those clicks. <laughs> Threads is testing today's topics to tell users what's trending in the U.S., which will definitely be gamed by people with a lot more money than normal people who are, you know, actually making things worthwhile. Also notice that they're going to filter out confusing or misleading ones, which <laughs> means that they are going to control... Very carefully, they're going to curate that. And if you... I say confusing things all the time. They're going to filter oh, out me. I'm confused constantly. There's a flag oh. now on your account where you can be flagged where you'll never be included in that. Mm. No matter what. So if, you're, if your wrong thing gets out there, they can control it. Poor Alex Jones. <laughs> and it's My heart weeps. We have some new uh, laws over there across the pond. And we have our first enforcement of those laws. And as... Horrible and draconian as these laws are, hard to argue against this one. <laughs> WhatsApp image sender becomes the first convicted cyber flasher. It's like, don't send pictures of, to people that they wouldn't want the picture. That's what this person did. And they were convicted of that. And they didn't need new laws to do that, really. Well, because probably something similar for airdrop, right? Because that was a problem. Like, people would get on an air, airplane and then they would airdrop pictures of random crap. This was, well, see, this was not random, though. This was Nicholas Hawks, 39 who sent a picture of his genitalia to a 15-year-old girl. Oh, I should have known better. That's gross. I think he knew better. <laughs> and it's weird because we saw just now where they were doing like the, the topics on threads, and they said that politics could be a part of that. But then we get this. Instagram and threads will stop recommending political content. That's probably for the better. My worry with this is that political content will be things like just things that aren't really that political like i would like the world to be a better place for all human beings or like you're just someone who happens to be gay and it's like well that's political so <laughs> so this is a toggle they're going to toggle it off by default but you can go in your settings and toggle it back on if you prefer that kind of content and if you are an instagram influencer and you've got to try and maintain that lifestyle, right? You got to run, you be all over the globe, beautiful foods and beaches and all that. How do you pay for it? Globe trotting millennial woman pleads guilty to sending seven million dollars of drone and missile parts to Russia. You know, you just hard work, <laughs> consistent post schedule, and also sending drone parts to a Russian military. So she used her globe trotting on social media as kind of a to hide the fact that she, she was Canadian. She was shipping parts out of New Jersey to Russia. And she was all over the place. But she did have time to, to make some posts, as you can see here. The usual influencer posts. <laughs> the thing also reports she stopped posting in what, like October? And a lot of her cohorts were arrested. She's, I think she was also arrested now, right? Well, probably. And her... Considering we're hearing about it. Her partner in crime who was doing the shipping. And uh, some good news, if you are one of these people who was a Google Plus user and you didn't like what they did. Google shareholders to receive $350 million in privacy lawsuit settlement. Why? There's an open API where you could access all kinds of stuff. There's a, if you dig back into it, um, there was a, a thread from somebody at Google that's like, yes, this is how we've designed it. We want this API to be open. But the article points out, it's like, well, this is not a lot different functionally than Cambridge Analytica. And because of that, the court case proceeded and it looks like you're going to settle for $350 million. But not the people who were victimized by the leak. The shareholders, because the price went down so badly when yeah. it was discovered. So if you're a Google shareholder, you might get a couple of pennies out of that. But it, it, the article glosses over that Google literally designed it to be this way. It was not... Like, oh, I guess if you if you abuse it, we could consider it a leak. But they designed it that way. And uh, it seems like TikTok is kind of tempting the bear here. Because we know that politicians don't like them. And now they're saying that they're going to censor those same politicians. <laughs> TikTok threatens to censor politicians who promote misinformation. 
I wonder, you know, in the first episode this week, we talked about how there was a politician misrepresenting what the Kids Online Safety Act actually did. I wonder if that would be... I don't think that'll count. That's definitely misinformation, though. (laughs) That is information that is inaccurate. But it always comes back to the same question, right? Who decides what's the misinformation? And if it's just ByteDance determining that? So far, I'm really liking the community notes on Twitter, though. Yeah, that was a huge improvement. Yeah. Community notes is like people looked at this and it's like this is misleading in this way and it's like this is actually a reasonable thing to say. But the most people, like very politically active people, especially on one side, hate it. <laughs> of course, they just hate Twitter in general. It's hateable. I don't blame you for hating Twitter, but some people hate it for the wrong reasons. So sh- it was a short one this week. It was Hopefully, short. that's not because I just forgot it. Once. Like I don't know where the Apple Vision story went to it was in there it's fine listen it's been a, it's been a week it's been a week i had a busy morning i'm sorry <laughs> can't stop crying <laughs> bye <laughs>